My name is Alan Snyderman. I am the Edwards Professor of Cardiology at McGill University. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to discuss with you for a few moments an article that we have in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled The Necessity for Clinical Reasoning in the Era of Evidence-Based Medicine. The modern era of medicine has been characterized as the era of evidence-based medicine. What does that mean? For most of us, it means an acknowledgement of the importance of the randomized clinical trial as the best tool that we have to evaluate the strengths and limitations of therapies to help our patients. Randomized clinical trials have been an enormous addition to our ability to move the yardsticks of care forward. However, randomized clinical trials cannot supply us with all the evidence that we need for all of the clinical decisions that we make. As randomized clinical trials have become so common and the methodology increasingly complex, we've come to rely on guidelines to evaluate and summarize the findings of the randomized clinical trials. And increasingly, our care is directed by the recommendations of these guideline groups. Guidelines perform an invaluable function for us, but we believe that it's critical for us as physicians to remain aware of the limitations in the guideline process and particularly in the limitations of the evidence as assessed by guidelines. Let me give you a couple of specific examples. Evidence inherently, because of the complexity of the problems that we deal with, is always limited. Take statins and cardiovascular events. No area has been more studied than this. In no area has the overall findings been more consistent. Yet even at this moment, how clear are we on the correct dose of statins to use? The general view is that the greatest dose is the best dose. But in reality, the clinical trials have compared the lowest dose to the highest dose. We simply have no information on intermediate doses of statins. For many clinical problems, we have little or no information at all. Moreover, there is an inherent limitation in our ability to generalize from the findings, the overall findings of a clinical trial to the likelihood that a particular patient will respond or be injured by a therapy. That's a major limitation that few practitioners appreciate and one that we try to point out in this article. How do we fill the gap? How do we come to the best decision for the particular patient that we're treating? The process is called clinical reasoning. And clinical reasoning is the time-honored, tested, method of problem solving that physicians and surgeons have used over all the time to try and configure what we do to produce the best outcome for the patient. The evidence from clinical trials and the recommendations of the guidelines are of course major inputs into that decision. So also is the recognition of the particular social and personal circumstances of the patient. But so also is our general understanding of the physiology underlying the disease processes that are present in that patient. And our clinical experience. 
What has been the outcomes that we and our colleagues know about in those particular circumstances? When we solve problems, it's an ongoing pragmatic exercise. We may try something, it doesn't succeed completely, we modify, we reevaluate, we wind up solving the problem. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.